welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And I know this is late. I've been told y'all this is gonna be late, and the next one's gonna be late too, because the Summer Olympics is a thing, and really all of the programs should just like took a pause. In my opinion. My opinion. But anyway, um, we are back for the Real Housewives of Real Housewives of Salt Lake. Ah, wow. I want Salt Lake City to start. That's not where we're at, though. <laughs> the Real Housewives of Orange County, season 18, episode 4. And this is called Not My Cup of Tea. Um, and this was a cute episode, but it, not much happened. Um, this was probably out of all the episodes so far, my least favorite. So I'll be honest, I don't feel like I missed much not watching this episode right away. Um, so, I mean, it's moving things along, but... I, it just was kind of, it was a silly episode to me, my opinion. Anyway, <clears throat> so the episode started with Heather um, and her husband. They're talking about all the properties they have and all that good stuff. But then they do get to more of the serious subject of Heather's husband, Terry, having the stroke and them saving his life. Because he was having chest, he was having pains, but he wasn't going to go get checked out. And it's a good thing he did because he would have died if he went in, if it was, if they waited too much longer. Um, so anyway, they're talking about that. And um, apparently there was an app that um, her son used to help them rescue him to basically get him, you know, taken care of immediately um, because he was driving. So that was even the scarier part when he was having a stroke. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so they were talking about that. And um, they kind of show a recap of, you know, how that happened. And that's pretty much how the first scene starts. From there, um, some of the ladies have a girls' night out. Um, it And it is Jen, Katie... Gina, um, wow, <laughs> Emily and Tamara, I'm laughing because I forgot, em I put Katie there twice and just like pretend Emily wasn't there, I gotta hold you, Emily's getting on my nerves this season, she's really getting on my nerves, I need her to get a true storyline and stop being a, trying to be a mean girl, you're not funny, it's not cute, it's annoying. And um, she does it multiple times this episode. And I, I, again, it needs to stop. Anyway, so Tamara decides to put together this girls' night. And of course, she didn't invite Shannon because she doesn't like Shannon. And I don't know why Heather wasn't there, but that's... Anyway, so all, basically all the other girls minus them two were there. And um, they go to pick up Katie... And then Emily has to use a restroom, but she won't use a restroom in her house. So she decides to use a restroom outside her house in a bush. And this is the other thing that I don't like about Emily. She's kind of like ill. <laughs> I'll just say that she's kind of ill. Like last season, she's eating, she's drinking water. From like her dog bowl. Like the dog just had some water. And now she's drinking it too. And now she, like it's just. Ill. Ill. And her excuse was like. I want to just get this girl's night over with. If I go inside. That means I need to introduce myself to her husband. So what? It's weird. It's weirdo behavior. Anyway. So they get to the place and somehow, some way, the subject about Heather and the paparazzi thing that was tired and was mentioned la that Tamara and Emily tried to make a thing gets reintroduced again um, through Katie this time. And it's like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, Katie, don't you a Anna Marie this. She's Anna marie this. After her son has tried to warn her not to do that. But she's Anna Marie in this. And anyway, so they're talking about this because apparently Katie has proof that this happened. And everyone 
at the table. Well, Tamara is somewhat just like, this is not a good idea, but okay. And everyone literally has that view. But Tamara and Emily, because they're mean girls, they love it. They're eating this up because they just love the drama of it. And Gina is actually trying to be a good person. She's like, I really, I don't know why she told this group this. She And she said something after half of them went away. She's like, why'd you tell them this? You know they're going to tell her, right? Like, you set yourself up for the okie doke. And you could tell that Gina, when she actually is your friend, she got your back. She was like, I don't know why you told them. <laughs> and also, so many different ways this episode, theme-wise, every single lady's been trying to tell her, and even Sutton tried to tell her the episode before, you and Heather are not on the same lead. Heather is going to kill you. <laughs> like, you're not... You're not on that level. There's levels to this. You, you're you coming in, like by you going directly to her, you're coming in hot. You're coming in way too hot. You're Anna Marie in this basically. And so then from there, they're talk, they start talking about the IG thing. Cause also, um, I don't remember if I mentioned this in the first episode or not, because I didn't think it was important, but apparently it's now important where Heather accidentally tagged Katie in an IG post. And whether it's intentional or not, all this is stupid. I don't care. The audience doesn't care. And in the words of Heather Dubrow, we're making a molehill out of an anthill. I mean, we're making a mount mountain out of a molehill. It's dumb. But anyway, that's kind of how this episode starts off too. And then, by the way, the girls' night was they were just at a bar, and then they decided some of the girls decided they're gonna put on, do their best coyote ugly. They asked the bartender, of course, first, and the owners first. So all of them are standing on the bar, like pouring liquor on each other, gyrating all the things like they're in coyote ugly. Um, Tamara's like channeling; she's in an '80s music video, and. <laughs> Gina and um Gina is me along with Katie both of them are just looking horrified like why are they what are they doing because it's not that type of bar they just decide they're just gonna do this though <laughs> yeah okay so then next we have um we have Shannon and the first appearance again of Vicki Gundelson. Now, Vicki Gundelson, as y'all know, she's the old G. She's like actually the first, she's like the original like housewife, like period of this show. And she's not, she tech, she's not a friend of, but she still just makes guest appearances here and there. And I actually like that for her. And actually, like, I don't like her necessarily, like, as a person, per se, but she's great TV. And I, I was kind of highly entertained with her and her and, um, and Shannon, because they're two chaotic, like, personalities. It worked. It, it worked for me. So, um, anyway, they, they basically were talking about the Trace Amigas and how basically now they're going to do it with them too. But they're both pretty upset about how it ended because apparently Tamara didn't tell them directly. She just decided she wasn't going to do it anymore. And Vicky, for those who know, and I know for those who have been following like some of the Bravo Street stuff, I think... Um, Vicky actually has a lawsuit that's happening right now that's kind of business related but I say that to say Vicky's about her business she's about her coins she's about her money she even alluded to it in her confessional because that's another thing she's a confessional even though she's a guest I love it um, but she basically was like I could you know I have enough money to retire but why what am I going to do <laughs> She's like, I just gotta keep it moving. And she was talking about how she has a staff infection and just talking about 
her body fluids. And for those who know, I I don't like talking about body fluids because it kind of freaks me out. So she was talking about that. But also, too, she was really, really irritated about the fact that, again, Tamara canceled and they're no longer doing this because she's like, we, it's a tour. And by the way, for those who don't know, the Trace Amigas tour was, they basically were going to do like a tours um, throughout the country, throughout the United States. And it's kind of like a variety show, if you will. And probably like a city winery. I imagine that's where they're doing stuff like this at. Because city winery, I think, is a small enough venue where they could do that. Um, and so there, and it was their way of making extra money outside of the Real Housewives show. They have their names. Everyone knows who they, a lot of people know who they are and they haven't, they built enough of an audience where they could just do this. And so they're upset because that's going to affect probably how many people might appear at the show. And also too, they have to rebrand it yet again because it got LLCs and everything attached to it because it's a business. So both of them are rightfully so upset with Tamara. But then Shannon does open up to Vicky to let her know that John is trying to file a lawsuit against her for money that's owed. Even though we all have seen throughout the seasons that Shannon has paid for everything for this man. So basically, John's trying to do a money grab. And he's just such a sleazeball. And I just, I can't wait to see how the rest of this season plays off when plays out when it comes to John Jansen of John Jansen of it all because he is such a sleazeball. And also side note, I kinda understand why this episode was kind of meh, because Shannon wasn't really in this episode that much. That was why. <laughs> Shannon's carrying the show. And she wasn't really on the show much this episode. This this explains why it just wasn't it wasn't given what's been given. Um, it was all right, but wasn't that great. Anyway, next. So next we have this short scene. Of, also, this episode had a lot of individual scenes. I'll just say that. Um, but it flew by quickly. But anyway, so Jen and um, is with Ryan, her her boyfriend, and she feels a way about how everyone's getting on her about her money issue. She feels very very self conscious about it. And by the way. This scene, she's actually trying to put like her lashes on herself instead of getting like a makeup person because she's that self-conscious about it. And side note, I want to say this because I had some criticism on two videos that, uh, not the last episode, but the episode before when I was kind of commenting about how she looks older than her age. Her without this makeup, she looks so much better. And not to like police anyone's bodies or anything like that, but... As a woman, I even am guilty of it too. Sometimes too much makeup ages you and makes you look even older. And I think she's one of those people that that's a thing. Because she looked amazing without the makeup. I was like, why is she putting on makeup? I think the only thing, I, I, I would love it if she just maybe just did lashes and then like the non-makeup look. But like don't cake it up. Like she, it seems like her, 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 she goes full glam and I think she's, not everyone needs to have full glam. Let's just say that. Some people look better, a little bit more bare face. And I think she's one of those people. I will be, I'm being completely transparent, completely honest with you on that. And again, overall, I do like Jen on, for the show. She's definitely quintessential housewife. She seems like a very, very nice and caring and loving person. I just hate how naive she is. But I also don't like how... And she's, she's calling out on this scene. She says the ladies, but really she's talking about how Emily's all on her, judging her about her money and her finances. And honestly, I just want, if Jen was to read her just real good one time, that would, that would get it. That would get it done. She just needs to, she just needs to get her together. Um, because Emily, to me, comes off as the type of person, if you don't step up to her, she's just going to keep poking you. You got to step up to her, read her for filth, get in her face, and then she'll leave you alone. Because she'll she'll know that you are not someone that, she, she, she's someone, Emily's someone who likes to pick on people that are easy to be picked on, in my opinion. She comes off that way. Because she's very insecure. It's very clear how insecure she is. And so she feeds off of other people's insecurities to make herself feel better. Like, basically, 
a quintessential mean girl. Anyway, and for those who are Emily fans, this is not the this is not the review for you. I'm about to tell you right now. I feel for her when it comes to her weight issues and how she feels about her weight and self consciousness because, girl, she and like I have similar I have similar struggles, but I'm also not an asshole towards other people. <laughs> like, um, yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> So they're getting ready to go to Vegas, and that's pretty much it with this scene. Um, and she was just, you know, getting venting about that. Um, the next we have Katie and her husband. They're going to dinner together. And this is when we find out Katie is planning uh, a golf outing with the ladies. None of them know how to play golf, including her, even though she's a golf commentator. And um, so they're going to do golf lessons, and then they're going to make it where it's like, um, drinking. Well... She originally wanted to name it drinking and driving, like, you know, hitting the driver. And she said that to Shannon, and they're all looking at her like, why would you do that? Because, <laughs> I mean, it's like, hello, drinking and driving? And, and Katie's like, oh my gosh, I put my foot in my mouth. I didn't even know, and I just put my foot in my mouth. I'm such an idiot. So she, she acknowledges at least that that was dumb for her to say that. So she called it, she's calling it a different event. But anyway, she's basically talking to her husband about that. She's also filling in about how she feels, how she feels about each of the ladies with her husband. We find out though that she really does like Jen. And that's, that's awesome. Um, we also find out that one thing she likes about Jen the most is the fact that she has adopted a child and because Kate has been adopted has is, is has been adopted herself and so she likes, you know, the differences between how Jen's outlook is as someone who's adopting a bar a, a kid who's outside of her race versus you know, her having that experience. So she does like Jen a lot. Um, but that pretty much concludes that. Next, um, Gina and Katie. Um, so Katie goes to Gina's house. And Gina kind of updates her that, yeah, Travis is no longer here. But he lives down the street. So it turns out he only moved down the street. So they live in the same neighborhood still. And um, also it turns out Travis is giving... Um, Gina a hard time about the whole entire situation. But I'm still like looking at this whole situation as like I don't Travis comes off like a bum to me. I'm glad Gina did what she did. I'm just gonna say that. I don't know if Travis is a bum or not. I don't know if they're still together or not. But I kind of feel like Gina's the one who's keeping this relationship together and just her. Because it seems like he doesn't want to do the work to work for it. Like, pull his own weight, number one. And number two, she even alluded to in this scene that she's been the emotional support, the one who's the more positive one who's viewing the situation versus him. And it's like, so if you got to do all that, you're carrying the relationship to me. But anyway, so we find that out when she's talking to either during this scene or when she was talking to Heather about it. She also talks to Heather about it later on in this episode. But anyway, so Kate's there. Katie's there. And she also like wants to give all the ladies like this golf outfit. And it's just a gift. And so, you know, kind of getting ready for the event. And then they talk again about the paparazzi thing with Heather. And then while this is happening, Tamara and Emily are hanging out together. And again, they're acting like jealous mean girls um, talking about... Talking about um, the paparazzi thing. And I think the whole thing is stupid. I mean, if she did, so what? I don't, I don't think this is notable enough why we need to keep talking about it. And so Tamara feels vindicated because she was the one who brought it up originally last season because Tamara also didn't have a storyline, which also she still doesn't have one this season. So it was kind of like whatever. And same thing with Emily. So yeah. Anyway, so while this is happening, 
Katie's also talking about another issue she has with Heather. And what she mentioned was that Heather um, was asking all of her friends about Katie. And all her friends are like Cynthia Bailey. Like they're the other housewives. Like, you know, they're from like, you know, Beverly Hills. Because we know that, you know, Heather lives in Beverly Hills now for the most part. She, is, she lives part-time in Beverly Hills. And Katie, you're putting 20 on 10. Every housewife does that. Every housewife that has a new housewife, that every established housewife is going to ask other people around about the newer housewife before they talk to the housewife, especially if they know if someone else in the group knows them. And the way that Katie's trying to paint this picture of the, that this is weird when it's not is weird, number one. And number two, it's weird also that you're kind of saying Cynthia Bailey was like your friend first. And it's like, y'all know, you know Heather's been a housewife for a long time, right? And so is Cynthia Bailey. They've probably known each other as long as you, if not longer. Like, the housewives are kind of like a sorority amongst, like, you know, the Bravo Leverties. They, they all talk to each other. So what Heather was doing was not that out of the ordinary. It wasn't weird. And because she was like, yeah, she was asking things to get dirt on me. It's like, no, she was probably just asking to get to know you. And I think even Gina tried to reason with her and say, like, no, she was probably just trying to get to know you. And... Again, she's trying, she's putting 20 on 10 and Gina's just still trying to like somewhat warn her like, look, okay, at the end of the day, are you going to talk to her about it? Because if you don't talk to her about it, I am going to talk to Heather about it, what you said, because I don't want this to bite me in the butt later on because I'm close to Heather and you're talking to me about this as if I'm not close to Heather. My loyalty to Heather also. So... Child, it is giving she's looking for a moment and she got in, she wasn't ready for it. <laughs> so next we have um, a short scene with, as the ladies are getting ready, um, Gina and Emily, they're getting ready and they're talking about Jen. Because it, it gets brought up that Jen went to Las Vegas and she posted on Instagram that she went to Las Vegas. And... Again, why do they want her because she has money problems to just sit there and be desolate? What is wrong with them? Number two, Ryan clearly paid for the trip. She has a boyfriend. I went, you know what? I ain't gonna hold you. I was unemployed back when I was like in my downward spiral of life. And I went to a con I went to concerts. I went to I went to Chicago multiple times because this is before I lived in the city. This is even before I lived in like in Illinois at all. Like I was traveling and everything, and I didn't have no job. If you have close friends, they'll split the bill for you because they want you to have a good time. And I feel like most close friends recognize tough times happen. And a lot of my whole thing is one of my best friends who used to like who would take me to these things. I was driving him around. I've been driving him around for years and never asked for gas money or nothing. So he was just like, you know, you always have my back. If I didn't have any money, you always had me. So, okay, whatever. I want you to come here and have a good time with me. So I'm paying for it. No big deal. And I'm pretty sure, like, just because you have financial hardship does not mean your life should be just over with and dead and desolate. And I really wish... And this is my thing that I do not like about Gina. Gina will apologize and say she's done over something, but she ain't over it. And just will bring it up again and just drag it out. If you're done with it, be done with it. And also too, Emily, why is this your business? Get a freaking storyline. <laughs> I don't know how many times I got to say that per episode, but I really want her to get a storyline and get out of other people's business because she's getting on my nerves. But anyway... So then after this, the golf event happens and um, it was cute. None of them know how to play golf. Emily won the contest. Um, 
And Jen was annoyed by it because Jen was like, because there was a prize uh, associated with this golf event contest. Um, and there's basically putting. And um, after the instructor taught them how to putt, they're always putting. And the contest was whoever got the low score won because, you know, that's how golf works. And um, basically, the cash, the award was... Um, Louis Vuitton glasses, I believe. And so, yeah, Jim wanted to win. <laughs> and not me laughing that Jim wanted to win after we literally just talked about how we should not be so critical about her financial issues. Um, <laughs> but she was annoyed that Emily won because she she's not liking Emily right now because Emily's been just ultra mean to, to, about the financial things as if what was getting me is Emily is acting like Jen's a scammer <laughs> and like I mean she's probably she's kind of close she's close to a scammer but she's not the scammer we'll find out later on her this season that her her boyfriend's a scammer not her that don't count right <laughs> but y'all have these housewives are scammers so I don't even know what you I don't, I don't know what you want me to do with that and like also too, like Emily, do you not like anyway, I just really want Emily to find something, get something to do. But anyway. So then um Gina talks to um Heather about her and Travis. And that's kind of why I mentioned it was a it was pretty much a similar conversation that she had with um Katie. And then after that, then we have um, Emily and Tamara be messy. They go directly to Heather and tell Heather everything Katie said. And Katie's on the other side thinking everything's all sweet and everything's all good. But talking to um, the ladies about all the things that she feels about Heather. Um, and all the other ladies' reactions are still the same reactions. <laughs> And Gina was like, rest in peace. And, and Shane was like, good luck with that. <laughs> and, and, and Katie, I think that's when she knew she effed up. Because she's like, not rest in peace. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, Shannon. And Shannon's like, I even know I don't I don't go to Heather unless I... I no. <laughs> And um, Shannon also was like, also did kind of share, yeah, she, um, Heather did the same thing to me when I joined this group, you know, check to see, you know, who my friends were and asked about me. And again, I don't think that's like outside the norm. It's not her trying to get dirt. It's not, I don't think it's as much of a thing as like a um, Margaret from like Real Housewives of New Jersey. It's not that. She's not trying to get an arsenal on you. It's more or less, who is this lady? Is she good people? That kind of thing. And so, basically, Katie goes to talk to Heather, and this is where she effed up at. <laughs> because unbeknownst to her, unbeknownst to, um, to Katie, Heather already knew everything that was said, and Kate and, and and um, Heather was ready for war and ate her up. There's no there's no better way of saying it. And I knew she was going to do that because one thing that Heather does not like is you calling her a liar. And Katie kept insisting she's a liar. And what's killing me is this is literally all about the paparazzi photo thing. And then she tries to mention outside of that the Instagram thing. And it's like, this is so dumb. And, and that's almost a Neneca argument. It's like, oh my gosh, now we're going to pull the Neneca thing where we're arguing about social media stuff. About a tag. And Heather's like, number one, I don't even run my own social media. So, I mean, if I accidentally tagged you, my bad. I mean, and, and then the other thing that she ate her up about was the... Um, Asking about her thing. She's like. 
you, I feel like you want a problem with me. That's what Heather, Heather fl flipped it, flipped it, reversed it. She's like, I think you're the one who wants to have a problem with me. I didn't have a problem with you. I'm just trying to get to know you. I, you're making it as if I have a problem with you. And now I probably have a problem with you. And um, Katie's like, wait, what, what is that about? She's like, well, because she's like, well, if you want to get to know me, you can just get to know me. She's like, well, now I don't even know if I want to get to know you because you're doing the most right now, which I'm sorry, she was right. And it ends where Heather ate her up and got up out of there. And she's like, oh, yeah, and you can keep the Don Perignon as a gift because she showed up with a gift at the event. She's like, here, I got Brawl Bottle Don Perignon. You can keep that, though. I was like. And that's how the episode ended. I was like. And the preview from the next episode. Katie's doubling down and trying to challenge her again. You didn't win round one. You're not going to win the next round either. I don't think anyone ever beats Heather when it comes to these arguments. Because even Shannon knows better. And Shannon be eating the girls up. And, and can. You know, can hold her own typically. And even Shannon was like. Man, I just really wish Katie would listen to her friend Sutton. When Sutton tells you she's not the one or two, I wouldn't do it. And Sutton is, can eat the girls up when it comes to her arguing. And if Sutton's telling you this is not a good idea, you should just leave it alone. And the thirst is real, I guess. I don't know. But that does conclude The Real Housewives of Orange County, season 18, episode four. Um, yeah, let me know what you think about the video. Let me know what you think about the episode. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka The Mountain Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye.